Hi, my name is Jeroen Lennartz and I'm a Developer Relations Engineer at Stream and welcome to my messy attic. In this video I will showcase how you can actually use a bit of glue code between the Stream backend and your front-end device or web browser window to make sure that the server credential provided by Stream's backend API is not exposed to these client uh, runtimes. Because you want to keep your API credentials a secret, especially your server secrets, uh, you need some glue code that lives between your front-end implementation and Stream's backend. And in this sample with some Node.js code, we will do exactly that. So to get started, uh, I'm going to create a directory that will be the basis for our work today. Then we need to make sure that we initialize a Node Package Manager project. I'm going to use uh, most of the defaults here. Let's get our package dependency. So the dependency that we need to be able to integrate with everything that we're going to use in this uh, uh, in this project. Then we need to install these packages. And for convenience, I want to add uh, a few script start commands. I need to get started with, um, uh, with my source code. So I'm going to create a file called index.js. And I have some basic content here that I just want to make sure that we have a look at. All right, what we have here is your starting point of our application. Uh, we import uh, Express and uh, cross uh, origin uh, scripting support. Uh, we create an app, we make sure that it's connected to port uh, 8080, uh, unless some environment variable is set. And we make sure that there's a hello world endpoint available on the slash uh, root on the server once we start running it. So let's uh, try and run it uh, right now. That's starting. And now let's see if we can actually reach it. And it says hello world. This is of course uh, coming from our uh, running process on this tab. And I'm trying to call into it from this tab. Let's stop it. This looks a bit red, so let's get rid of that. Next, we need to create a file to contain our database logic. And again, I have the contents of this file prepared. Let's go to the top of the file and have a look at what is in this file. So first of all, I do a number of imports of things that I need. So SQLite, some uh, utility that helps me create a directory and some crypto cryptography. Uh, I make sure that uh, I get a path and a file at var db sample.db. Then I create the database scheme, well, at least the function that would create this. It's a simple create table call that creates a table with four columns, an ID column, a username column, a hashed password column, and a salt column. Uh, the hashed password and the salt are related to each other. Then I create a function that uh, creates an initial user. Uh, this just makes sure that we have some sample data to, uh, to work with uh, once, we, once we are developing. And then I need to make sure that these functions are actually called. You will notice that both SQL statements only do something if the data does not exist yet. So the create table only operates if the users table does not exist. And the insert statement only inserts the statement into users if the values for the primary key, in this case Alice, is not present in the table uh, yet. And um, by doing so, we make sure that this script can be run over and over again on each, each run of our uh, code base without causing any issues. Next, we need to create uh, our application routes. I'm going to put those into a separate directory and I'm going to create a file there. So let's edit this file. So again, I have the contents of this file prepared. What I do here is import the express framework, make sure that I uh, get a signup login and users uh, function from the controllers auth.js. We still need to create the file and the contents there. I create a router statement and I make sure that the signup login and users routes are attached to the tree function that I 
import it uh, just uh, above and then I will export the router uh, outside of this uh, module so that it's available from the location where I need to call into this code. So let's uh, start uh, working on running this to see, to see that it fails and then implementing the missing details so that we get a working state again. So let's start working on the index.js file first. I need to do an import of the file that we just created. So let's uh, get started with that. And then we need to make sure that we actually use these routes in our app. So let's try and run this, this will fail. Because uh, certain modules uh, were not found. And that's the controller slash auth.js. So let's start working on that. Let's go over the contents of this file yet again. Uh, I do some imports here for cryptography and uh, hashing and salting my passwords. I make sure that uh, certain aspects uh, of another part of our code base that I still need to create are imported into this file. And then I create the sign up uh, uh, function. Uh, basically this takes a username and a password from the request body and uh, assigns the username uh, as a user ID and then registers this user and then handles uh, the results of that. Uh, do note, I pass the username and password here and in practice, in production, it's always better to do the password hashing on the client side. In our sample code base, we do the hashing of the password server side. So just be aware of that, that that's uh, something in the production environment you want to do differently. Uh, then we have uh, pretty much the same thing for our login function. We take the username and password, we verify the user and if that's successful, then we log in the user with some error handling. We also have a users function that takes a search term and the user's current ID and then uh, tries a search for this user on our database and if that's successful, pass the results back to the uh, caller of this function. So what we're still missing is attaching the controller logic to our DB logic and that's the utils uh, function uh, file that we just saw. So let's start working on that one. Oh, that's a typo there. And again, I have the contents of this file prepared. And let's quickly go over the contents of this uh, file as well. Uh, I make sure that I uh, get the stream APIs available in my code. I also need the bcrypt dependency here as well. I make sure that I have my database logic available. I make sure that I'm able to deal with uh, .env files because uh, on these three lines, I try and read three variables from my .env file. So that's the API key, API secret, and app ID. All three of these are related to the stream um, backend and service. And then I have my verify user function. Basically this uh, selects a user from our database based on the username. And uh, if that's uh, successful, if that user exists, then we try and check the user's password by hashing it against the stored value in the uh, database. Uh, register user uh, does uh, an almost similar thing, except instead of selecting it, it tries to insert the user into the database by first generating the hashed password uh, for this user. And then we have the search users uh, function. What this does is try and select a, an ID and a username from the users database by doing a like query on the username and the search term that is passed to this function. Then we have some uh, handler logic. So the signup handler basically constructs the response uh, once the signup is successful. Uh, and it does this by making sure that the uh, prior function does not uh, create an error. If an error is created, a server 500 error is thrown. And uh, otherwise it will return the username and user ID as the result. But it will also make sure that it creates a uh, token for the feedback end and the chat backend of the stream uh, service. Uh, 
and everything then is wrapped up in a response, a 200 response, and sent as JSON back to the client. For the login handler, we do uh, a similar thing. We try and get fresh uh, tokens uh, for uh, this user. And if that's successful, we send everything back uh, to the client as well. For the search operation, we make sure that if we have results, we send those back uh, to the client as well. We will also need a environment file. And once we have our environment file, we try and run everything again and it should now all be working. So let's try and sign up. Uh, I think I know what's going on here. It's either over here. This looks good. Ah, yes. I forgot a slash here. Details are important. Let's try that one again. We signed up. And now we are going to log in. That works. So let's try and search for something uh, that we are sure that will exist. And that's what you see here. We can find the search term with the letter E for ourselves. But that's of course not what we want because if I add it like this, I will not find anything. So let's do another sign up we can't sign up the same user again of course but we can sign up another user and then if we search for that one and now we do find the other user so what we just did was uh, a number of things uh, we created a project that has a number of routes and with these routes we were able to make sure that our end users are able to connect to our backend without exposing our stream credentials. I hope you found this useful and if you have any questions feel free to reach out and you can find this code in a sample repository which is linked from the description of this video.